everyone, it's Dr. Joyce Park and oh my gosh, it's getting cold. I'm up on my office, my home office on the third floor of our house, which has a separate heating unit and it is really chilly up here, which brings me to the topic of this week's video, which is how to transition your skincare routine for winter. Why does our skin get so dry and flaky in the winter time? It is a combination of several things. First, there is very low humidity in the environment and our skin does tend to draw water and moisture in from the environment. We also have the heater blaring all hours of the day. I know we have our heater on like 24 hours a day, especially because my husband and my infant and I are at home a lot. That really takes a toll on our skin. I can definitely feel a difference right away. When winter hits, our heater comes on, bam, dry skin. Also, and this is a skincare sin that I commit, I tend to take hotter showers in the winter time because it's so dang cold and the hot water just feels so good, but it is very dry for your skin. So this combination of all of these factors makes for dry skin during winter time. So today I want to go over three classes of skincare ingredients that you should look for to amp up the skin moisture content during winter. And those are humectants, emollients, and occlusives. And then also take you through some of my products that I'm using. For example, I switch out certain skincare products that I use during spring, summer, and substitute these heavy hitters in for winter. So I'm gonna go over that full product list today as well. First off, let's talk about humectants. Humectants are skincare ingredients that help your skin retain and hold onto moisture. So a very famous example of a humectant is hyaluronic acid, but there are other ones. For example, glycerin, urea is a form of a humectant as well as aloe vera. So there are multiple examples of this. And one tip that I have about using humectants is that you want your skin to be slightly damp before you apply a humectant. Otherwise, if you apply it on dry skin, the humectant can actually take moisture out of your skin. Typically during summer, you know, it's not as big of a deal because the humectant can take moisture from the air. However, during the dry and cold winter months, there isn't as much humidity and moisture in the air. So you always wanna give that damp barrier on the base of your skin before applying a humectant so it can really do its job. Next are emollients. So emollients are a category of skincare ingredients that are thicker, slightly more oily and they function by basically plugging in and filling in the spaces between your dead skin cells in that outer layer of your skin. Think of things like ceramides, which are the mortar between the bricks that are your skin cells. They go in and they basically fill in those gaps and this helps to repair your skin barrier so that you're not having cracks in that skin barrier that make you more prone to the harsh elements or to bacteria. And it also helps to keep good things in. So it helps you to keep your moisture in. Other examples of emollients include shea butter or colloidal oatmeal, other types of lipids and oils. These are a great addition to any winter skincare routine because they really help you repair that skin barrier and also really keep your skin surface very nice and smooth. Lastly, we have our occlusives and these work by literally occluding that top layer of skin. So they form a seal over the top layer of your skin to basically trap in whatever is underneath it. So examples of occlusives include most famously petrolatum, waxes, silicones, mineral oil, lanolin, etc. These occlusives can be very, very effective for trapping in moisture and just trapping in really whatever is under it. But one thing I will caution against is if you have oily or acne prone skin, you generally don't want to apply occlusives over your problem areas. And also I don't recommend using occlusives on top of active ingredients such as retinoids or powerful exfoliants because that can actually increase the effectiveness of those ingredients and may cause more irritation, specifically and especially when it's winter and your skin is already a little bit more sensitive and dry to begin with. So which of these humectants, emollients, and occlusives are best for you? It kind of depends on your skin type, but I also think for winter time, you need all the help you can get. So I would say you can kind of pick and choose ingredients from each of these buckets and put them into different parts of your skincare routine. For example, you can layer and you can start with a humectant on your base, like as a serum, and then you can put your emollient on top of that, like in your moisturizer, and then you can lock that all in with an occlusive on the very, very top. So some general tips or general rules of thumb that I like to keep in mind for transitioning to winter skincare are one, swap out instead of light gel consistencies, choose thicker, creamier consistencies. Two, opt for more ingredients that help you hydrate and moisturize
guys. So looking specifically for those emollients, for those humectants, as well as those occlusives. Three, you can try to layer your products. I am a super big fan of simple and easy skincare routines, but during winter, I do find that I need to add more steps in my routine just to keep that hydration high. And then lastly, don't forget to still use your sunscreen because even if you feel like you're not getting any sun at all, you may still be getting some, like if you're like me and sit next to a window all day. And of course this depends on where you live, but when I was living in California, I sure as heck was getting a ton of sunlight still during the winter time. So keeping those general rules of thumb in mind, I'm gonna go over my product picks for this winter. Now these are all products that I use personally that I have been reaching for often, especially during these winter months. Starting off, I have my cleanser. This is the La Roche-Posay Tolarian Hydrating Gentle Cleanser. And this actually is a favorite of mine year round. This is a new bottle. I haven't finished my current one yet, but I'm excited to move on to this one when I'm done. This one contains ceramides as well as niacinamide. And you'll see niacinamide coming up a lot throughout my winter skincare routine. And that's because it can also help with hydration. It's very versatile. It can help with brightening. It can help with exfoliating and it's an antioxidant. But this is a very gentle ceramide filled cleanser that I really like for winter. I find that it leaves my skin cleansed, but not feeling like squeaky clean and dry. It leaves my skin feeling hydrated along with this one. But I also like the CeraVe hydrating cleanser, which also contains ceramides and it's very hydrating and gentle. So those two are my top picks for cleansers during winter months because they are gentle enough on my sensitive dry skin and also contain high levels of ceramides to help moisturize my skin. After that, I usually use some type of serum on my face. So this is a step that I do not typically use. Like during spring, summer, and even fall, I don't typically opt for a serum on my bare skin after cleansing. I usually just go right in with a moisturizer, but during winter, I can see my skin getting super flaky and dry. So I've been using more serums lately. So the two that I'm gonna share with you today are the Rode Peptide Glazing Fluid and the Glow Recipe Watermelon Niacinamide Dew Drops. I actually did a whole video review of the entire Rode skincare line. So I'm going to link that up here. Please check that out if you're interested. But I've been really liking actually this peptide glazing fluid. I wasn't using it as much during summer, but am now reaching for this more during winter time. It is very lightweight, so it kind of absorbs quickly, which I personally really like for serums. It doesn't leave a very sticky finish. And this one contains peptides for plumping. It also contains niacinamide, which I talked about earlier. And this one also has marilla oil as well. This one also contains hyaluronic acid as well. So it also has humectants. So it really has humectants. It has the marula oil as an occlusive and as an emollient. And I find that this one just is a really great lightweight one that I can use for layering. I also have been trying out the Glow Recipe Watermelon Dew Drops with Niacinamide. This one, it comes out as more of a gel, but I found that it leaves a more sticky residue on the skin. I love how it smells though. The Rode one is fragrance free and I do love some fragrance in my skincare because I'm not allergic to fragrance. So I love the way that this one smells. It applies really easily. I would say this isn't as lightweight as the Rode one. This one is deeply hydrating. Because it leaves a stickier finish, I actually would opt for the Rode one instead. So I think this one is better if you have really, really dry skin, and then the Rode one would be my choice for combo skin or acne prone skin. So let's move on to sunscreens. I've been choosing sunscreens that tend to also be moisturizing. So I'm going to highlight two today. The first one is the Beauty of Chosun Relief Sun Rice Plus Probiotics. So this one goes on like a moisturizer. It feels awesome on my skin. It really just feels like I'm putting a moisturizer on. It is a chemical sunscreen and it contains a bunch of vitamins that help to nourish and soothe the skin. This one is SPF 50 plus and PA plus 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 with the UV testing done in both Korea and Spain. And so this is like a really powerful sunscreen that offers high levels of UV protection. I actually use this both summer and winter, but I do think this is a great one for winter because it feels like a moisturizer. The other one that I've been reaching for, and this one is not the exact one, the exact one's downstairs, but this is the La Roche-Posay Tolarian Double Repair Face Moisturizer. And the one that I use with sunscreen in it has a UV at the end of it. It comes in two forms. 
platforms, as you can see here. This is the straight up moisturizer. And then I use the one that has chemical sunscreen ingredients in it. And what I love about this is that just like the cleanser, you know, this one contains ceramides, niacinamide, and glycerin. So it hits many of those categories that we were talking about in terms of ingredients for winter skincare. And it goes on really light, like it feels like a moisturizer. It doesn't feel like a greasy sunscreen. This is oil-free, non-comedogenic. And so this is also great for layering. So both of these are really great sunscreen options for winter that also layer well under other products. Next, I'm gonna move into moisturizers. And this is where I really step up my game. Like I really switch out my previous like gels and lightweight moisturizers for thicker, heavy duty, ones that are really gonna do like the heavy lifting overnight while I sleep. So I choose really thick moisturizers for this. And I'm gonna go over a couple of my favorites and these come at all different price points. And I'd love to know what you guys think. Starting off with a drugstore favorite, this is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gel Cream Extra Dry. And this one contains hyaluronic acid. It looks like a gel. Like it does not look like a cream. It looks like a gel. However, you might be thinking gels, those are more lightweight, right? They absorb quicker. So it looks and feels like a gel. However, it leaves behind this really thick residue where I wake up the next morning and my skin is still super hydrated and even like a little bit tacky and sticky from the application the night before. So this is an awesome one. It is a drugstore, you know, cult favorite and for a good reason. So I recommend this actually for all skin types. It's really great because it is super hydrating for dry and combination skin, but because it has a gel texture, it's also awesome for oily acne prone skin. It doesn't feel heavy, but still is very deeply moisturizing and also very effective. So this has been a favorite of mine for years. All the way on the other end of the price spectrum, we have the SkinCeuticals Triple Lipid Restore. This one is also a cult favorite for a reason. It has the same ratio of ingredients of ceramides to cholesterol to fatty acids as we do in our own skin. So it's kind of mimicking the makeup of our own skin. It has 2% ceramides, 4% cholesterol, and 2% fatty acids. And this one feels like a cream. Let me show you how much I love it. <laughs> this is completely empty. And this really is one of the most hydrating, most moisturizing creams I've ever used. This is in fact the best cream that helps repair my damaged skin barrier when I'm over aggressive with the acids, when I'm over aggressive with my retinoids. This really is my holy grail for a reason. I know it's super expensive, but it really does a great job for winter months. So I will always opt for this when my skin is super, super dry. All right, one product that my husband has actually been really loving is the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. In fact, it's yet another empty. He has used this completely up. This one is formulated with glycerin, which is a humectant helping to draw your fluid in. And it also has squalane, which is an emollient. It's an oil that helps to repair the barrier of your skin. This one goes on, I would say this is medium weight. Like this absorbs a little more slowly than the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Gel Cream, but it's not as thick as the SkinCeuticals Triple Lipid Restore. So this one is kind of in the middle. I would say this is great for all skin types. Squalane is actually better for acne oily prone skin than its cousin Squalene, just through the process that it's derived. And this one always leaves my skin feeling really, really well hydrated throughout the night. Last but not least for the moisturizer section, I have been trying out this Tatcha Indigo Overnight Repair. Oh my God, it is so good. It's like blowing my mind how much I like this. I should have mentioned this in the beginning, but none of these products are sponsored. Like I have worked with Kiehl's and Neutrogena before, but this video is completely non-sponsored and just my personal opinion. So I first saw my friend Jane Tui, who's a cosmetic chemist, talking about this as one of her recommendations for what to pick up during the Sephora annual sale. And I happened to have it in my closet. So I decided to break it out and try it for myself, especially because my skin is super dry lately. This one is formulated for sensitive skin. It's fragrance free and it contains indigo, which has anti-inflammatory soothing properties. This one also has ceramides, palmitic and linoleic acid and phytosterol to help with repairing the skin barrier and really locking that moisture in. So the texture of this is more like a cream. I don't know if you can tell, but it's more like a cream rather than a gel. It goes on just feeling super, super thick and luxurious. And I really do wake up the next morning with still very, very moisturized, kind of like slightly sticky, tacky skin, which I really like. So the only thing is I kind of wish that this had a little bit of fragrance because I'm a girl who likes fragrance, but obviously it's not for everyone. So if you have sensitive skin, if you are looking for a great overnight heavy duty moisturizer and 
and also one that's helping to soothe a little bit of inflammation, then this would be a great option for you. Lastly, I just wanted to go over a product that you can use on your body. So this is the Cetaphil Advanced Relief Cream with Shea Butter. And I actually, to tell you the truth, I was using this on my face. <laughs> like a couple months ago, I destroyed my skin barrier and I couldn't tolerate any products on my skin. Everything stung so badly and this was the only thing that didn't hurt my skin. But now I'm really liking this for particularly dry spots on my body. Like for example, elbows, knees, cracked heels of my feet, around my fingernails. And this one has shea butter as well as vitamin E. And this one is just a really thick cream for the body. So I'll show you. It comes out like this and then I'll just put it on my hand here. It's thick. It's thick, but it feels really great. Like it's not sticky. I really don't love it when things are super sticky. I don't mind if I'm sleeping, but if I have to go throughout my day and have sticky skin, pet peeve of mine. Okay, so I just put that on and it feels great. It's not sticky. It feels super moisturizing and hydrated. So this one is a favorite for the body during winter time. All right, so that was a quick roundup of all of the products that I am currently using for my winter skincare routine. Obviously, it's not a full list because I didn't go over, for example, my antioxidants and my retinoids and my acids and things like that. But these are examples of products that I have switched in specifically for winter time because they do contain more of those humectants, emollients, and occlusives like I talked about in the beginning. Please leave any questions about any of these products or if you have questions about transitioning to winter skincare down below. And please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because I do have a lot more content coming out for you guys soon. As always, until next time.